Today we're going to look at how to implement a tri-state checkbox logic using MVVM. RAD Tree View is part of the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight WPF Control Suite for .NET XAML development. So some applications use checkboxes that allow an indeterminate state in addition to the two provided by a normal checkbox. The third state is shown as a square or a dash in a majority of applications and this indicates that its state is neither checked nor unchecked. This is most often used when the checkbox is tied to a collection of items in mixed states. Today we're going to investigate how you would do this using the RAD tree view control in the MVVM pattern. Let's go ahead and jump into Visual Studio 2010 and get started. So we're going to begin here by going File, New, Project. I'm going to select Silverlight and then RAD Control Silverlight Application. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to give this a quick name and I'm going to select OK. So we're going to go ahead and accept to host the Silverlight application in a new website and we're also going to be using Silverlight version 5.0. The next screen that we see here is the project configuration wizard. Uh, I know that I'm going to need the RAD tree view in this application, so I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to place a check here in Telerik.Windows.Controls.Navigation, which will also check the dependent Telerik.Windows.Controls. Finally, I'll just go ahead and I'll hit finish, and our Silverlight file project will begin spinning up. Once our project is finished spinning up, the first thing that we're going to notice is over here under References, we have Telerik.Windows.Controls and Telerik.Windows.Controls.Navigation. We'll go ahead and we'll expand the main user control window and we'll see the XML namespace here is going to be mapped to Telerik. So now we see that we have the XML namespace of Telerik already in our Silverlight application. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to begin creating a folder called View Models since I know we're going to use MVVM in this solution. So I'm going to come up here, I'm going to right click, I'm going to add, and I'm going to name this View Models. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add two classes here. The first class is just going to be called our typical main view model. Next, I'm going to add a category class here. So I'm just going to do new class and I'm just going to name this category.cs. So this class is going to help us with some dummy data as well as help us determine the status of the checkboxes. So the first thing that I'm going to do with this class is I'm actually going to fix all my using statements because we're going to be also using uh, system.collection.objectmodel, telerik.windows.controls, and of course system.link. So now that I've fixed my namespaces, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paste in a code snippet. So I'm going to scroll back up here to the top where we can review this together. So the first thing you're going to notice here is that we had category, but I added the view model base. So view model base supports property change notifications and it is a base class for all view model classes. So this is provided by Telerik. So the next thing that you're going to see is that we have added in a private string underscore name, a boolean is checked, we have a reentry check set to false, and then we have a private category that is named parent item. We also have an observable collection here that is unnamed underscore products that's set to null. As we begin walking down through this, for our name, we see our typical getter and setter property. For the boolean, and I'm just going to scroll down just a tad bit here, then we have our is checked. So we will see that it has a typical getter, but the setter has several checks in place to see if it has already been checked or not. So next up we have products, which is an observable collection. And this does not have a setter, but it does have a get that if this dot underscore products is equal to null, then this dot products equals a new observable collection with of course our category and it returns this. A 
category with the category of parent and of course it's setting this dot parent item equals to the parent that's passed in. We have an update check state. This updates all children as shown here and this code is going to actually update the parent item. We then have an update children check state. So this is going to loop through the products and it's going to see if the this dot is checked is not equal to null then the item dot is checked is equal to this dot is checked and then finally down here at the bottom we have a determined check state and all this is simply going to do is this is going to use a link statement to determine if the children are checked or the children are unchecked now that we have that in place we're going to go ahead and move on to the main view model so inside of the main view model I'm going to do the same thing that I did before and I'm going to add in my using statements. Next up I'm going to replace this class with a code snippet and of course we will review it. So to begin we're going to have a new observable collection that's called categories. So we're going to scroll down just a tad here and you can see we have categories equals new observable collection category then of course we're creating a new category called beverages and inside of our first loop we are creating five new beverages and if we look inside of our second loop here then we're creating three subcategories. If we scroll on down then we will see that we are wrapping up by adding a, another category here called confections and then a third category here called condiments. So now that we see this code in place, finally we need to wrap up by adding this to our mainpage.xaml. So I'm going to double click on mainpage.xaml and I'm going to need to go ahead and add in the XML namespace to my view model. So I'm going to go XML namespace VM equals and I'm just going to scroll down here to view models and I can come here before my grid and I'm just going to simply paste in a user control data context VM equals main view model. So you may have to go ahead and build the solution in order for it to resolve that squiggly line that we just saw. And to wrap things up I'm going to replace the grid with a Telerik rad tree view. I'm setting the margin I'm also setting the item source to be binding to categories. We have a custom item template here with a Telerik hierarchical data template. The item source here is going to be binding to products. Another simple stack panel set to horizontal. And then we have a checkbox that binding is, is checked. The mode is set to two way. And then we finally have a text box that's just going to be binding to the name. The rest of these, of course, are just closing out of the tags. So from here, we can go ahead and we can run it. So I'm going to begin, start without debugging. And we see we have beverages, confections, and condiments. I'm just going to go ahead and expand that. I'm going to select beverage zero. And you can see that this has changed to an indeterminate state. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to check all of these and you can see now that this main beverages has a checkbox in it. I could also take this checkbox out and you notice that the checks from beverages 0 through 4 were removed as well. I can place the check back in and there is there and they are back as well. I could take the check out of one of these and we can see that this is set to indeterminate. This also works down here for the other confections and condiments. And we will just experiment one more time with condiments. And as you see, that works just like as we have planned earlier. So thank you for watching. And please tune in to tv.teleric.com for more videos. And check out blogs.teleric.com for the latest news and announcements.